the 2022 photo contest. And um, like Peter said, the winners from this will be announced at the banquet. Um, so the banquet is in um, February, but it is the awards banquet for the Golden Chanterelle um, President's Award and Photo Contest Awards um, for 2022. And what I'd like to say is I hope this inspires you um, to get out there when the snow stops flying and mushrooms are popping to take some photos. I always find this to be one of the more um, educational evenings just because we're seeing so many things. You can kind of see um, some of the similar species that you might have seen in the woods, things that you saw but you didn't know what they were, um, get some ideas about taking photos um, and just, all in general learn about mushrooms. Um, I'm gonna start with um, Howard's notes about this. Basically, um, we got a lot more submissions this year than we did last year. Um, we're trying to have more entrants instead of having a smaller amount of entrants and a lot of photos. Um, you can see here's his 2021 numbers versus 2022. Last year we had 32 entrants and this year we had 50 different entrants. Um, we have 122 pictorial pictures last year, and this year we have 165 to go through, as well as 42 scientific submissions, and then 50 other, which we sometimes call the humor division. Um, so there's 257 total submissions. Um, so we've got a lot of photos to go through tonight, and I'm going to be advancing the slides with some help from John Lamprecht and Ron Spinoza. Um, on some of the names so that I don't have to sweat it here with all the Latin and embarrass myself. Um, you can see his list of the nine judges here. So all of us received um, a folder of all the photos and a ballot to vote. And if we also enter the photo contest, we receive um, a folder that doesn't include our photos. So we can't vote on our own photos, but we vote on each other's. And again, then the, the winners will be announced in these three categories. And then there's one winner that has the highest um, votes overall that gets the, the Blue It Award. All right, so the first category would be called the pictorial category. And the rules for this category are that um, we're really judging on the overall quality of the photo, the composition, lighting, clarity, depth of field, all of the visual aspects of it, um, the aesthetic quality and the creativity. Um, and a lot of times we say this would be a photo that would be worthy of being in um, a calendar, greeting card or poster. Um, and we also hope that um, we can learn something from it as well. All right, and Ron, do you wanna do you wanna weigh in on these? I can sort of introduce them, and you can talk about. Okay, let's, Emma, can you hear me? I can. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, here's this is um, photo number one. They called it growing up, and to me, I see this as a Russula species, and I would be hard pressed to know more about it. Right. But so I, lots of red russellas, easy to identify the species. I mean, to genus, but species is difficult. So we will see more red russellas coming up. Perfect. What I like about this photo is how it shows all the different growth stages, what a tiny one popping up looks like and what an older one looks like. Photo two, uh, golden oysters. These These buggers are being... Uh, are a lot more pro prolific lately. Pleurotus, citro, <laughs> can you say it, Ron? Citrinopiliatus. Awesome. And they are an invasive species now. And we'll see, there's a lot of photos of those golden oysters coming up, so. Here's a beautiful okay. close-up of the um, pores of a Swelis mushroom. and a photo they've titled Waterfall Mushroom. So it's a nice landscape photo as well as um, a photo of the mushrooms. Um, maybe a foliota, Ron? Okay. Well, I'm thinking it could be um, 
leucofolio decorosa, maybe. So, I mean, I'm going to be just throwing some names out here that that are my best guesses. So, mm-hmm. anyway, that's leucofoliota decorosa is my guess. Nice. And then these are cultivated species, um, Lentinus edode, so uh, shiitake, but um, kind of aesthetically pretty nonetheless. Mm-hmm. And this would be a spiny puffball, lycoperdon. Echinatum. Echinatum. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, that means spiny. Yeah, echinatum is spiny. And then lyco is wolf. Is it true that (laughs) they're called wolf farts? The wolf fart. Yeah. (laughs) Lyco is wolf. Perdon is wind, I think. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> awesome another foliota species really pretty with the soft background and the dark wood and the very bright yellow mushrooms that i sometimes think look like a like an onion bagel <laughs> <laughs> so those are probably yeah golden golden foliota is most most likely perfect yeah can I ask one more question? When you guys are seeing my screen share, are you also seeing the the Zoom um, uh, menu or no? I'm not sure about menu, but I can see like the description. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I just didn't want you to see like where it says share, stop, share, chat, whatever. Okay. Oh, so perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, slide eleven. I'm calling it a moody shroom. <laughs> And this one would be pretty hard to to tell species wise because yep. it's so dark and we can't see um, the gills underneath. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Chlorophyllum recoides. This is um, just a very close up and we're seeing this um, beautiful ring yeah. and all the details. Looks like it's in the rainforest there. But, yeah. Like it's so that's unique. the shaggy parasol, which is a uh, which is a good edible, and but very similar to the poisonous one, the green gill, chlorophyllum molybdites. Mm-hmm. All right, and Ron's favorite grouping, um, a slime mold. This is um, red <laughs> slime mold sporocarps. Okay, and I'll just make a comment that there's a number of slime molds that look like that at different species they're very difficult to tell what they are until they get more mature and they pop out a like a cotton candy looking bunch of stuff mm-hmm. but we, we can go with we can go with that name so anyway yep, especially for, yeah. for pictorial they're they're definitely yeah, right, so that's, to look yeah. at and then this one is um what they're calling silver leaf fungus condo yeah and that one's not not too common i have i've only seen that a couple of times but that's that does look like a an example um yeah go ahead and then a delicate beauty of a um latiparous cincinnatus this is what we call chicken of the woods but when it has the white spore surface underneath or pore surface underneath, it's called Cincinnatus. But this is a really um, beautiful arrangement of one and it's nicely framed. Yeah. Oops. Um, and a turkey tail close up. Turkey tail in Carly State Park. And a yellow jelly fungus, a nice close up. Okay, so that's the witch's butter, uh, one of the yellow, yellowish jelly fungi, and um, that one is uh, Tremella mesenterica. Nice. These are always Ooh. beautiful. The Mycena <laughs> hematopus, which is the bleeding Mycena, parasitized by Spinellus fusinger. So, yeah, those are always fun to see in the woods and they're hard to photograph so it's nice to see nice to see that yeah that's nice very nice 
And then they called this one brownies. And I guessed it was Foliota uh -huh. squarosa. Ah, yeah, good. Okay. And then um, a nice little cluster of jack-o'-lanterns, which are extra orange because they're, they look like they're wet, which is a nice, another nice thing in a photo to see some different, different um, textures, some highlights and shine. And a little mushroom that I'd be hard pressed to, to ID, they just titled this Sunshine. Um, I would guess it's a waxy cap, do you think, Ron? That's, that's what I would say. That's about as far as I could get with it. Yeah. And then a coral. Yeah. Yeah, really nice lighting on this one and nice depth of field. This one is um, what's called the crown tipped coral. Um, and that one always grows on wood, which is a little hard to see in this photo because of the moss. So even though that makes the photo really beautiful. Um, yeah, one of the IDs for this one is that it's growing on wood. Oops, sorry. Skipped. Okay. Got a little bit of a delay here. Sorry. All right. Hygrosabi cocinea. Scarlet waxy cap. Okay. This is another uh, red waxy cap. It, I think these are the ones that would be hard to know which one is which by species. Right. So there's about three or four different red red waxy cap ones, and yeah, it would be hard to tell which which species it is without seeing more of it. This is just a. Um, a pastoral scene with another slime mold, the scrambled egg slime or fuligo septica. Also called a dog vomit slime mold. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. And then this, All yeah, right. This is a really beautiful mushroom to find. This one um, they titled Pretty in Pink, called the Rhodatus palmatus. I've also heard it called the Wrinkled Peach Mushroom. Mm -hmm. And chicken in my woods. This would be the other version of the chicken of the woods, the Latiparis sulfurius with the yellow pore surface underneath. And those are some really nice clusters. Another called slime mold. Ron, is this really a slime mold? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. So like a there's that wolf again, and, and gala is like milk, like in galactose intolerance, <laughs> uh, epidendrum. Yeah, so that's the wolf wolf milk slime mold. And if you popped one of those open, a fluorescent pink uh, goo would come out of it, which is very impressive. And this is really zoomed in. They're they're much smaller than they kind of appear in this photo. I think that's why this is a really nice photo. We get to see the the textures on it and really get to see. You can kind of see by the scale of the moss how close yeah. we are here. So and then slime molds are not really um, fungi. They're a they're actually giant amoeba. <laughs> they crawl around, they move around, and then when they get ready to reproduce, they produce different shapes of fruiting bodies. That's, this is one of them. And so this is titled Richard Anderson Park is my kind of scene. And they're making a play on the Mycena, Mycena hematopus, which is the bleeding Mycena. This is a really nice view of that, though, the, the gills and the pink. Yeah. And when you break these stems, um, a red liquid like blood comes out. So it gets the name bleeding Mycena. And some more chicken of the woods. They're so, so brightly colored. I, I always say they want to be found. Mm. I think they want to be photographed as well. <laughs> And this is a um, picture of two mushrooms, even though it's, um, I mean, two species. So even though it's at first hard to see the second species. 
the Amanita flaviconia, that's the larger mushroom, and then the Bisporella citrina, which are sometimes called um, lemon drops, and they're these tiny you little. Got a, if you got a pointer, yeah, okay, there, there, yeah, the lemon cups, lemon drop cups. Yeah, lots of yellow in this photo, really nice. And another yellow, but an edible yellow this time. Uh, um, lonely chanterelle, they called it. So I just labeled this cantharella species because lots of times it's hard to know which exact chanterelle we're finding. And agaricus arvensis, they have on this, um, the horse mushroom. Yeah, I, I really like seeing this really prominent skirt and just all of these um, pink gills turning brown. That would make a really beautiful spore print too. And this one they call the violet entoloma. And I'm, I'm not positive, but... Um, yeah, but it does seem to be a nice dark color. All right, Ron, how about this one? ID unknown. There's <laughs> going on there. That one is um, Sizzygites, S Y Z G I T E S, Sizzygites. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I can't remember the species now, but sometimes called the bad hair mushroom when it gets on there. So that's this. It is, it's a parasite. It's a, it's a mushroom parasite, the fuzzy stuff. Yeah. Growing on a different species. Well, that's, that's a fun one. And here we have a really nice crown tipped coral again, nice and close up. Um, you can see that these little tips have the, the crown tips on them. We can see it's growing on wood, so it's easy to get a good idea on that. And then they're calling this oyster. We're just getting a chance to see the gills and the gills uh, running down the stem. Um, nice light shining through those gills. So it's kind of an, an art, art shot. <laughs> Right, another little red mushroom. I think we're starting to learn <laughs> learn about the, um, Ron, do you call them Russula or, or, or Russula? I say Russula, but then, you know, I say potato and you say potato. So <laughs> potato, tomato. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I'm gonna go back when I, I missed one. Here's some more um, lycoperdon, pyroform, the pear-shaped puffballs. And glad so you came. Are you glad you came? Mm -hmm. Puffballs on a log. There, now you can see the. Oh, whoever's on, you might want to mute. This is a very, very close-up shot of this tiny, tiny mushroom on the leaf. Um, Ron, I would call that a Merasmius. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's a Merasmius species. Is is unknown. But... And Ooh. this weeping mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so that one looks like maybe a bow leaf that's been parasitized by something. Yeah, that's what is, I think. It's definitely. Is that what you think, Kathy? I do. I think it's been attacked by a parasite, and it's it's. Um, sorry, um, the the liquid coming off it don't isn't that called gutation? That's right. Yeah. Oops, so, yes. when here's another beautiful but moody photograph. Mm, okay. Yeah, Trichelomopsis rutilans. So that's all. That one is goes by the common name of the plum and custard. And so you can see the plum color, but if you look at the gill, the gills have a, a yellow custard color. 
So that's where you get the plum custard. Nice, yeah, beautiful shot. Hey, and our friend, the, the little spiny puffball. Like a perlatum, per so the perlatum, I think, is talking about it being a little um, textured, maybe. Yeah. And a big white um, or elm oyster coming out of a knot hole in a log, like they like to do. And so that's uh, Hypsozygous ulmarius, and they grow around here almost exclusively on box elders, wounds and box elders. Nice. Here we go. This one is titled Yellowfoot Flames. So they're sort of comparing the composition of the photo to be like a, um, a fire or flames. Um, there's really nice light coming through that. I'm wondering if this is just, do you think these are just old, Ron? And they're, they're also getting a That's little- That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, they're, they are, you know, one, they're, they're like of the, the tubey type, but there's a number of them that are like that. So they're, but they're craterellus now. Those are in the genus craterellus instead of cancerellus now. Nice. Yeah. They are edible, even if you don't know right. what they it are. Edible. They are. And here's a very classic yellow on yellow chanterelle, and that is in the cantharellus genus. A nice, nice close up picture. And the, the, the photographer titled this Standing Strong. Um, this would be a Lexinum species. And Ron, do you want to talk about the yeah. stem at all? This. Yeah, well, okay. The genus Lexinum, one, the characteristics it has these little black spots on them that are, that are called scabers. Another name for, for this genus is called the scaber stalks. And there's, again, there's the, there's some that have kind of an orange cap that that may fall into that group. Right. And um, um, well, they, it's one of these ones that people have eaten it for years, but uh, now some of the yellow ones, they are the orange cap, like cyanums. There's been some reports of GI problems. So now the books say don't, don't eat them, but I've eaten a lot of them. <laughs> anyway. Now this is a dramatic photo with the lighting. This would be a um, a, a hericium, and I think it's the possible coralloides. Coralloides. Yeah. yeah, coral tooth fungus is the title, but I would call this hericium coralloides if we were going to go by species. And a couple ah. really nice edible boletus. I think what I like about this photo is being able to see the reticulation in the stem. All of this texture in the stem sort of helps um, identify these as well. Wow. <laughs> mm. Hypomyces uh, cereoporus. Somebody put a name on that thing, which is um, interesting. Mm -hmm. So that is a, um, a pheasant back mushroom or dryad saddle with a black, big black foot that's been parasitized by a hypomyces. And um, I've never seen anything like it before. And I did see that in person. And it's like, actually, I mean, a lot of times the hypomyces, like with the bowl eats, will make them soft and squishy and nasty. But, but this was firm, like, like the lobster mushroom. And um, maybe it transformed it into something good. But mm -hmm. whoever did the photo, I think I know who it is, uh, came up with the Siriporus as a species. So... We, and we'll I think that that species is now getting sequenced 
I think so too. Yeah, yeah. that'll be fun, fun to see. That's yeah. correct through the Field Museum. Yeah, right. Good work, John. Yeah. All right. This this is a really pretty um, picture of a very small Hericium, um, Hericium americanum. We can just really see um, the close up of these little teeth and this nice light on it. And I like the I like the depth of field in this photo as well. The white on the dark is actually kind of hard to yeah. photograph as well. Right, and here's the pheasant back, not parasitized. I think this is one of the prettier mushrooms out there. Wow, and then there's this classic one, <laughs> the Amanita muscaria. Really classic um, fairy tale mushroom that is, is a toxic Amanita, and it's typically a bit more yellow and orange in our area. So this one, I can't tell if this is from our area, and it's just a dark, darker red one, or pretty orange. So it's pretty orange, yeah, maybe it is probably from, from our area. <laughs> Here we've got um, some artist conchs, so called um, Ganoderma aplanatum. Lots of foliotas today. These are super fun to photograph. There's just so much texture on them. This would be foliota scorosoides. So it's slightly different species than some of the other foliotas we were looking at. This super shaggy stem. Oh, and an earth star is what these are called. Gosh, I love how close this is that you can actually see these grains of sand on it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is called the, the barometer earth star. So when, when it's dry, it curls up into a ball. But then when it gets, the humidity goes up or it rains, it turns inside out and actually lifts up off the ground. And then when a raindrop hits the ball, it'll puff out a, a bunch of spores like smoke. Awesome. So it's almost like a puff ball like a on puff top puff of ball. that star. Yeah. Nice. And our very photogenic species, uh, the crown tipped coral again. It's a nice shot. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> paradise. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't know. Those are, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard to do an ID on those. They could be the, like, golden trumpets, xeromphalina, uh, possibly. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell the scale yeah. as well. Oh, and the bleeding mycena again. You can see these, um, the spinellus that loves to attack these kind of poking yeah. This is a really beautiful close up of that species as well. All right. Cantharellus flavus, the golden chanterelle. <laughs> Bumps on a log. <laughs> uh, I, so I don't know. I think those are probably the pear shape, uh, the pear shape puffballs. Uh, okay. Michaelperdon piriforme. So. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. Okay, I think I know what those are. Those are um, that's a Coprinellus disseminatus. Okay. Which are like they're. They're like they're inky capped, but they don't, but they don't uh, deliquesce, which means they don't uh, turn into a bunch of black goo. But they're yeah, they are they are common in rainforests. When I was down in Colombia, I saw a bunch of them down there. Cool. And I don't know where those are from. Maybe it is. No, they they did name it symbiotic rainforest relations. Yeah. The name of the photo. Right. And this one's named Snow White. Snow White. What I would notice about this is the, 
the jagged edges on the gills. Um, which I think are naturalists. It's a little hard to tell, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be a, one of the waxy caps. Um, yeah. But we can't, it's hard to say from that. But it's pretty. Man. There we go. <laughs> there we go. More Plus spinellus. One. Yeah. Yeah, if we had a, I think we could do a wow. quiz at the end of this, and I would expect a, a, some species, everyone, um, to remember. It's, it's, this is a, a great way to learn some of the common species and see them in different forms. It's a really nice view of the different, different um, spinellus. Oh, and then this is, this is not a fungi. It is um, um, an actual a parasitic plant, it's I believe. A, yeah, it's a flowering plant. Those are actually flowers. So it's a plant without chlorophyll it doesn't need chlorophyll because it gets its nourishment from underground um, mycorrhizae, my mycelial underground mycelium. So it's sort of like a plant that's acting yeah. like a mushroom. Oh, and there's some color hygrosopy. So those are the ones we were calling earlier um, waxy caps. Right. Really beautiful color. And a really? giant chicken of the woods. <laughs> wow. Oof. Wrinkly stink horn. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> wow. And yeah, uh, that huh. uh, they've given that a new new name i think i mean you can look it up in mushroom expert and it um you, this that name rugulosis is a, is a new name that they're putting on that one now but um anyway that's a weird looking one yeah it's cool. really cool looking too right and our old friend chicken of the woods the bright yellow underneath side growing in a rosette form. And then kind of the opposite of that, something that's not so colorful, not so sturdy, very fragile, um, the Coprinox, Coprinopsis lagopus. I always hear this called the, um, the hare's foot inky cap. Um, these sort of disappear just as quickly as they yeah. appear. Like when they're, when they're small and immature, they're, they're um, sort of the shape of a, they're smaller, but the shape of a shaggy mane, but they got, they got a bunch of hair on them and that where they look like a, a rabbit's foot. But then they get, then they open up and they're very, real delicate. Perfect. Now, if we were gonna do a quiz here, can yeah, I guess is that this is the crown tipped coral that grows on wood. And then I uh, might add that that's the easiest coral, easiest coral to identify, and it's also uh, edible. One of the um, the corals are generally difficult to identify, and not many you want to eat. But mm -hmm. this one is pretty easy to identify, and it's edible. And uh, <laughs> Hericium hooray. Yeah, I think I would be happy if I found this as well. Yeah. So. The lines mean again um, a hard. Well, that one looks like that looks like Hericium americanum, and so there's a three species. You have the Arenaceous, which is one that looks like a ball with long teeth hanging on it. Then you have the the Coralloides, which is real little thin branches with little teeth, and then you have americanum has more more bran thicker branches, but branching with kind of medium-sized teeth on it. Great. Wow. Yeah. Bicolorable eight. Wow. So that one used to be a boletus, and then they changed the name of it to this weird name, Borangia. I don't know what that mm -hmm. means, but 
one of the things to notice that where it's been cut, it is yellow. It is not, it's not turning blue. So that if it was, if it instantly turned blue, it would not, it would be another species. Right. Showing this cut is really helpful yeah. for identifying. Right. And uh, this one is just called observer. I would um, call this a, um, a cup fungus of some type, and it is growing on wood, which should help narrow so, it yeah, down. This, uh, cup fungus is like genus Pizziza, Pizziza, but yeah, species, uh, there's a number of those that are difficult to identify. Nice it's color and lighting on this. Though. Yeah. And so this is just called split mushroom, but um, I would I would put it into that um, hygrosabi or waxy cap um, right. area. And this one is called mad about mushrooms. Okay, um, and those are the the golden trumpets there, which um, are genus Zeromphalina with an X. X E R O C Romphalina. Right. So this is a very zoomed in. Lots of times these are and they're big. really small. Mm -hmm. I mean they, you know, they're like a maybe a quarter inch across. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah, they're smaller than they look in that photo. Ooh. <laughs> Spider mushroom. All right. So this this is one. It's a great photo because they captured the spider. But two, it's um, kind of a rare mushroom to find too, and it's got this sack that it grows out of, um, off of the wood. Um, and that's so Ron. I'm blanking. Is a pluteus? No, it's it's Volvar, Volveriella. Right, right. Volveriella bombacina. Yeah. It's a cool mushroom. Really cool mushroom. It be cool edible mushroom. too. I've never eaten it, but mm -hmm. I only found it about twice. But no, this is a hericium. I'm not. I think it is cor. Do you think it's coralloides? Yeah, I'll go with coralloides on that. Yeah. And the. Super photogenic Amanita muscaria, really typical of our area with the, the orangish yellow cap. Let's see, this one's called hmm. Wolfsford Woods Delight, Foliora, Foliota arivella. Um, I'm not sure. It's you know, sometimes when things get a little older, it's hard to tell whether this would be the oh. golden foliota. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see. So nice Wolfsfield Woods is a, is a cool, it's kind of an old growth place, but, and you're not, you can't pick in there, but you can, you can photograph in there. Nice. So. I like to see how these mushrooms have really decayed this wood. Like they're really eating it up. Ooh. You know, I think sometimes the crust fungi don't get enough attention. And yeah. I love that someone photographed this and photographed it really close up. So this one's called That's cool. That's Lactius. Really yeah. And it's it's a crust, but it's it it also has it's called the um white is it called the white milk tooth polypore, Ron? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's milk like tooth. Like, milk tooth, yeah. Milk tooth. Yeah, it's it's trying to get starting to grow these teeth as it turns into this sort of shelf sort of crust <laughs> yeah really nice that someone got up close on that one right and the elm oyster three you can see that the hand in there for scale that's a pretty one yeah, yeah. <laughs> and crinkly. Thank yeah, sometimes you. sometimes when um, mushrooms aren't as fresh, um, they're just as interesting to look at, but it is harder to identify when when the gills aren't fresh. And there's the there's the witch's butter again, I believe. Well, 
Yeah, th- I don't know. I'm thinking that one is actually, well, you know, the oh, orange jelly, one. which is yes. dacromyces. And I'm saying that because of the way that it's, it's it has it. attached at the base down there, which uh, like, like, the, like a little the witch's on. butter is more widely, like these will attach um, at kind of a point in the in the base. Like, yeah, right. Like you can see there. Yeah. This one's named Fall Colors. I would guess this is um, Sterium, one of the, the false turkey tails that lots of times gets a lot of nice color. Yeah. Yep, I'll go with that. <laughs> oh, and so more golden oysters. They are, I mean, even though they're probably invasive, they, they still are beautiful. <laughs> Oh, and a foliota, the golden foliota. Gosh, this is almost like a, a still life or a painting to me with the lighting on it. It's, it's really nice. And this is a couple different species. Yeah. The photographer named this Better Together. So we're seeing some jelly babies. Mm-hmm. Right, the jelly babies. Leo, sorry, yeah. sorry. sorry, I'm gonna go back. Yeah. <laughs> wild, wild. Uh... Leosia lubrica, the jelly babies, and um, looks like it's more wax or scarlet waxy caps yeah. faded, but yeah. Pretty. All right. And the, the bleeding mycena again, right. mycena. Good year for those. Yeah, hematopus. Yeah. All right, kind of a still life again. <laughs> Morels and chives. All right. Corals aren't just in the ocean. And those are the, I think, let's see, staghorn, staghorn uh, jelly. Fungus, which is Calocera viscosa. Mm-hmm. The antler jelly. That's, yeah, antler jelly. Wow, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the total yeah, pink. pink oyster still life. Beautiful. <laughs> Perotus d'amour. <laughs> More <clears throat> nice little cluster of yellow oysters. Ah, the chocolate tube slime. Yeah. <laughs> Steminitis splendens. So when those are young, they look like they look like tapioca. They go through an amazing trans metamorphosis when they when they form their fruiting bodies. You can find time lapse on YouTube and they're pulsating and then they just turn and they go zap and turn into those tubes. So this is very, very close Beautiful, yeah. It is really beautiful. All right, this almost looks like a couple different species. But I could, yeah. do you think that this one? So, um, tra- uh, Tramites betulina used to be Lenzites, which is the gilled polypore. So we can't, unless we looked underneath there, mm-hmm. we couldn't really, really know for sure, but it could be. You can kind of start to see this little maze or gilled structure here. And then, yeah, it's hard to tell on this one if this Okay, is could be. Like yeah, it. okay, yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the, the gills. Okay. Yeah, nice colors, though, a nice, nice yeah. composition. All right, and this would be one of the um, more toxic Amanitas, the Destroying Angel. What I liked about this photo is that you can actually kind of see where it was making its own white spore print on the on the skirt there. Oh, yeah. 
Ooh, and a nice wet <laughs> foliota. They called this honey-like, and it does look like it's covered with honey. I think we saw these foliota earlier, but yeah, nice colors on this on this photo. Let's see, mushroom and moss. It looks like a bowl. Okay, that looks like a bowly, but boy, I don't know which one it is. And it looks like it's growing out of wood, which is kind of unusual for a bowly, but um, it is unusual. Yeah, sometimes it's well rotted wood, you might see it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what species it is, mm -mm. but I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah, I like the composition where there's this yeah. kind of swirling wood as well, kind of just setting the stage for just one white mushroom. All right, and then here's some more turkey tail. Gosh, growing on something yeah. really small. And they called this eggs on a log, but I'm gonna say that it's, we're back to the, um, the wolf's milk slime. And that these are the, yeah. the little pink wolf's, yeah. wolf's milk slime. Gosh, I think we've seen these guys before too. When they talk about the um, monotropa, that's the monotropa uniflora, the, the ghost pipes again, and a, a really wet mushroom, which I would have a hard time identifying. Yeah, I don't know. But it's a nice, nice cluster. Hey, Kathy, uh, you might want to speed it up. You could check my note in the chat. I can't check your notes in the chat, but thanks for. Oh. Chiming in, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I can only see my screen, sorry. Um, so this would be a bitter bolete. It's a nice close up. Uh -huh. And another herisium. It's fun to see that the, the plant is growing through it. I would call this the coralloides, like we talked about. Yeah. All right. And um, another. Um, chicken of the woods, sulfur shelf, nice color, a little blurry, but I can still tell what it is. Mm. And I think, yeah, we talked about this before, being able to see this texture on the stem, which is called reticulation. So, and they even titled their photograph, All the Textures. I would call this a, a Boletus edgeless. All right, the plums and custard again, Trichlomopsis rutilin. Yeah. All right, two <laughs> types, Ron, I don't think I can, oh yeah, I can see this one. I don't think I could identify this. I don't know, I, 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 I would say maybe, maybe a um, lactarius yeah. something uh, and a, the 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 other one's a coral coral like could be a clavulina something but all right a nice underside view of the golden oysters pleurotus citrinopileatus and elm oyster one it looks like maybe these were meant to be elm oyster one two three so we're getting another another view of this this mushroom all right <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah here's the mushroom in the picture way up there lobster in situ and yeah a really nice close up showing how just the the hypomyces has really taken over and um the gills and made this kind of parasitized and and made it the lobster that it is <laughs> all right i like the name of this photo feeling a bit overextended <laughs> this would also be hypomyces um, so it's um, mm -hmm. a bolete mold taking over, probably a bitter bolete by the looks of the stem. All right, velvet polypore. I would call this the um, the resinous polypore. Um, 
which I think there's some other pictures. Sometimes you can see them young and they have little drops of resin. Sometimes when they're older, they do look brown and velvety. Um, and they sometimes from afar look like they're the artist conch, but if you went up and touched them, they're really soft and squishy and they actually are edible. All right. Ron, you talked about these before. I think Yeah, these... so I think though, yeah, more of those the golden golden trumpets is Ceramphalina. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So these would be another picture yeah. of the Ischnoderma resinosa and the resinous polypore. They're a little younger. There's a lot of them. They would they would be very soft and, and squishy. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful pheasant back. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love it. Is this a pheasant back? I put yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Chromer chromiolosporum. Chromiolosporum surolescens. Uh, Ah. And that is, I have never seen that before. That is really, a, that's a rare mushroom. And uh, what it is, it's actually an anomorph of, uh, of, a, of a cup fungus. An anomorph. So like some, some mushrooms have a, a sexual stage and an asexual stage. So this is the asexual stage of a pizziza cup fungus i had to look that up <laughs> wow yeah beautiful yeah. And rare. all right and amanita at voyageurs national park that's just a really simple but beautiful photo nice depth of field um prematurely balding <laughs> that would be probably the same same genus and species just not opened up and Oops, what's, you, what's good about, you want to go back just, you can see those with the muscaria, you have the concentric rings rising up off the base. Coming out of that bulb. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and this would be a wide view of the steminitis, the tube slot. Right. Yeah, so you can really see the scale on that one. And hidden treasure, favorite chicken of the woods with a nice little sun flare there. This would be a really close up of a slime mold eating oysters. It's kind of fun to see. So usually well, when, you, when you find a, a yellow slime mold on an oyster mushroom, it's almost always uh, Physarum polycephalum, which is the the lab lab rat of slime molds that's the one they and you can send uh, if you take that home you can um you can keep it as a pet keep it growing which <laughs> i've got some in my kitchen drawer right now so <laughs> awesome here's another nice shot of the the golden foliota called clusters yeah. on a log and Puffball friends, I think we're going to be better at our puffball ID, seeing that these are on wood and they're pear shaped. And this is called orange mycena, but I am yeah. not. So do you think it is? No, I think that's again, I think that's those golden. The golden. golden yep. Yeah. And the big red mushroom, the, the red russula again, that is the photogenic mushroom. All right. Golden oysters. <laughs> A nice view of the, the gills underneath. And gosh, this I think is just a really, really, really young wrinkled peach. What do you think, Ron? Yeah, I mean it's interesting to see it I like did. that with the the big stem and 
Yeah. But it's yeah, that's what it is. Kind of fun to see all these um, lichens. And then it almost looks yeah. like we've got some oysters growing in the yeah. background, yeah. potentially. So lots of times there's more than more than meets the eye at first. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice basket full of porcini, the bolites. And, and yeah, that's that same orange jelly that right. we saw before. So this is where you were saying that instead of it just being a blob, it's kind of got these little stems or they're like little fans when you look up close. It's nice and shiny. And oyster it almost looks like a yellow oyster as well. Kind of a still life. I think we saw this species before too. This is just a really um, clean photo of an orange capped lexinum with the scaber stalk. All right, funnel cap, which I think they're just using as a descriptive name mm -hmm. because of the shape. There are some species that are called funnel caps. I don't think this one is one of them. I would think this is maybe either the, the the rooting colibia maybe that's possible yeah uh, i can't come up with a good idea on that but that's one possibility Ooh. and those yeah wow. so this says pnw side so the pacific northwest i was going to say oh. this is so rainforesty okay so yeah i was i didn't see the pacific northwest on there so really fun that it's yeah. just kind of a, a circle of a nice nice composition and shape for the photo all right mm -hmm. a slug and puff <laughs> and this one is called simply fantastic and i do like the the light when it's shining through the gills treasures of the woods Nice little arrangement of various mushrooms. White coral. Ooh. Yeah, really nice um, Hericium coralloides. And this is a big enough example of it that you can really see that coral branching structure. That would be a really nice find, nice edible. Look at possibly growing. And pretty very clean, deep. too. That's clean yeah no with a lot of times those if they get dirt on them they're really hard to clean let's see this is a really close up of a slime mold with a really decayed polypore kind of fun to see the, mm -hmm. the structure we sometimes call it scrambled egg slime This one's named bristle. I think this is our friends, the foliota again. Yep. Woohoo. <laughs> right. Look at that. Yeah, this is really distinctive of how, Ron, you were saying that the, the elm caps grow out of knot holes and wounds in box elder. Yeah. That would be an, an elm cap or hypsozygous ulmaria. Right. Oh, nice. Okay. This is drip, drip, drip. This is a <clears throat> inky cap showing its inky stage. Shaggy mane. Shaggy yeah. mane, yeah. And this is titled Umbrellas After Rain. I would guess that these are Mycena hematopus again, the bleeding yep. Mycena. It is amazing how, how many of the same species we're seeing. Same with this. This is not a chestnut mushroom. And when you see this, the shaggy stem, I would think these are the underside oh. of the foliota that are opened up. Yeah, so yeah, the foliota, some species, yeah. Fall bonnets. Yeah, hard, hard to do the ID on this one as well. So it would be Mycena most likely, but species unknown. 
nice amanita kind of just pushing up through all of those pine needles. Ah, united mushrooms. Yeah, I don't, we were seeing a bunch of these um, different places and I have, I don't have a good ID on them. I mean, they look like sulfur tufts. They do look at the, but um, they don't have a ring on them like, but the sulfur tufts should have some kind of a ring on them. So this fuzzy, yeah, I don't know. Fuzzy my, they my got fuzzy. Could be yeah. a, nice picture though. Yeah. Overlooked beauties. Probably some um, Mycena again. Yeah. Little posed clust cluster. And the Rhodatus palmatus, the wrinkled peach from below, which has the little gotation, the, the dripping features. All right, this one is titled Image One. I'm not sure if I keep going to see image two. No. Yeah, okay. that one. Yeah, go back. That one could be um, like the painted Suillus, possibly. Be a guess. Yep. Baby chicks. <laughs> small, small hen of the woods, which is yeah. a different species than chicken of the woods. Scaly treasure. These look like they may be old foliota. Orange frilly. Okay. Waxy cap, very close up. I'm gonna have to take a little. Why don't you go ahead? I gotta take All right. A I'll keep maybe when we get to the next section. I'll, we I'll chime in. A little break. I can, I can okay. help out. Whoa, this is this one says untitled, but I'm gonna guess this is another um uh stink horn. <laughs> it is, it would be in the stink horns, yeah. Yep. Golden delicious, a really nice close up of a yellow chanterelle. Probably a flavus. Yep. The umbrella family. I would call these Mycena as well. Neat. Probably pura which is the common Mycenas. And then the bleeding fairy helmet. Yep. Nice picture. Oysters on a mossy log. And this, to me, it's starting to be rare to see the regular oysters. There's so many of the yellow oysters around that you don't see yeah. the, the old school oysters anymore. But that's a nice photo. The, the spiral of life. This would be the um, the sterium, I believe, one of the the turkey tail relatives. Oh, and an earth ball. We've seen a lot of puff balls, but not a lot of earth balls. So probably be citrinum. Very yeah. a very nice close up to see the texture on it. Pigskin puffball. And a really nice close up of the Amanita muscaria before it has opened. Some more really yellow oysters. <laughs> this is titled Log. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a feel from the stem what what the mushroom is, but I don't think I can quite quite do it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, if, if they could be elm caps, but I'm, I don't know. And <laughs> white menace. <laughs> Depends on who you are, I suppose, if it's a menace to you or not. Um, like a perdon, perlatum, the pear shaped puffball. A okay. nice, uh, nice, nice close up. Oh, no, no, sorry, that's um, per, perlatum. Is perlatum. The, yeah. yeah. Perlatum. Sorry, not the pear shaped. 
All right, make me a crown of mushrooms. This is the crown tip coral again, growing on wood. Nicely lit photo, nice and crisp. And some bird's nest fungi. So these are minuscule. So this is a really, really close up photo. When these open and you look inside, there's sometimes little um, spore structures that look like eggs. This is called Foliota polychroa, but I'm seeing some puffballs and then I'm seeing some um, coral potentially. Yeah, something's, yeah, there's, yeah, that must be mislabeled or something. There are some, some of those coming up. All right. Okay. Well, we're, this is the, I've been looking at the numbers. I think, what are we about over, are we over halfway of the, the mushrooms pictures? Um, yeah, just, just yeah, over halfway. Yeah. Halfway. Yeah. So, we got to kind of scoot. So. Scoot. so here's the, this is the scientific category and, um, Entries in this category should provide as much technical information as possible. They would um, might show multiple stages of development or spore prints, show key features for ID. Um, it could be one photo or multiple photos. And these are something that could be featured in a field guide to help you identify something from a photo. And John, I will let you take it away. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, foliota. It's one of three foliota polychroa. That's the second one. And the third one, not one I'm very familiar with. So Me neither. Nice. Yep. Very interesting. Nice to see. And this has got everything all on one slide, um, including scales, et cetera. This is Amanita bisporgera, our, one of our destroying angels. Um, this is the more ro a little bit more robust stem one. Actually, it's kind of thin too, but it does show the spore print and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it also comes with an ID slip, which is another another feature uh, for us judges to uh, to consider. Uh, Flagina fake. Faginea, uh, fenugreek stock ball, which I am not familiar with this mushroom at all. Never have seen yeah, it. Me neither. Um, no. no, it's pretty rare. But um, nope. anyway, but it smell actually it smells has a curry like smell to sure. it. Sure. Where the fenugreek? Yeah, there is a number of you know mushrooms that have that feature of that type of smell, and there's a Mycena hematopus again. Uh, it says one of three. These are the bleeding Mycena. Um, and then there's the second one and the third one showing just the scale. They are usually quite small. So, and a lot of times the stems will be hollow like that. Um, let's see, Hypomyces lactiflorum. Yeah. And this is a, this is a close up of the pustules, <laughs> um, the bumps. Um, which is this is actually an ASCO my um, my city that um, engulfs a um, a Russell or, or a Lactarius mushroom, and it takes it over and says, uh, "Nope, you're not spore, and I am." <laughs> Turns it into a wonderful edible. Oh, sorry. Yep. Uh, Lycaria oca purpurea, which is a very common mushroom, especially as we get a little later into the summer. And uh, just beautiful, very striking with the purple gills. And mm -hmm. this has got the spore print showing the white spores, et cetera. So. And this is our white panther, uh, mm -hmm. multi Amanita multisquerosa. Um, quite common, depending on which woods you're in. And again, it shows some of the features uh, a very pronounced collar is one of the features around the base of the uh, bulb. Um, can be very, very light colored or browner colored on the tops um, like this, but it has the common name of white panther. Um, so it's not, it's in the panther complex, I guess we would have to say. 
Um, yeah. So it is a dangerous mushroom. Yeah, nice to see all the growth stages in this photo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hidden in Rapandum, um, and the interesting feature that's 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 shown on this is the uh, that it's attacked. Uh, this one is attacked on the side by a trichoderma spole uh, or a species of mold. Um, those those of us who have tried to cultivate mushrooms are unfortunately very familiar with this green mm -hmm. trichoderma spore mold or um, species of mold that attacks mushrooms. So, uh, Ishtenderma resinosum, actually it was talked about, the resinous polypore, and here's showing some of the guttation that's underneath the droplets that occur, um, showing uh, the tops and the bottoms of it. And Tricholoma focale, um, again, not very familiar with this one, um, but it is showing scale to show the spore print. Um, and so it's, it's one that some people um, can mistake for a matsutake because right. it does have a, it's got a, it's a tricholoma, but it's got a ring on it, as you can, you can see. And, and I'm not sure about the edibility of it, but it's mm -hmm. more from up north. You can find yeah. those. Yeah, and you can kind of see these pine needles, which is an indication and the pine needles, found right. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, there you go. The, kind of related to the the orange jelly. Yeah, little, Decrepanax spatularia. Um, a little. Yep. Fairy fans. Mm -hmm. Fairy fans, yep. And this is, I uh, got the whole tamale here on one, um, on one slide showing spore print, Gallerina marginata. Um, ID slip used to be Gallerina uh, was often called autumnalis, and then actually it was more per correctly and changed to marginata because it it can be found way more frequently than just in the autumn so or in the fall. Yeah, so, also called the deadly Gallerina. Deadly Gallerina. It has amatoxin in it, so it's showing scale. A number of other features I've never seen quite this much detail. Mm -hmm. um, Put forward for this particular mushroom. Armillaria malaya, uh, one of three. Um, here's a cluster, and then a couple of individual ones showing the showing the ring um, and the clustered growth. I'm going to need a multi-sclerosa or squamosa again, the white panther, another um, another uh, depiction of it, showing a couple of different growth stages, uh, showing that collar and the spore print um, and the tightness of the gills, free gills. Phyllis duplicatus, netted stinkhorn. Showing all the various things. Oh, yeah, look um, at and it all kind of blown apart here. So you can see all the various different pieces and parts of it. <laughs> just We just don't have smell o vision. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's yeah. that, that hare's foot that we talked about before. Yep. And, it show, and what's really kind of striking about this particular mushroom is that it's so translucent once it becomes more mature. I mean, you can see actually the detail of the stuff underneath it. Mm -hmm. you know, not part of it. You can see the the wood chips underneath it and that kind of stuff you know, often. Tough to get a spore print out of a uh, caprinus. So, mm -hmm. but there it comes. Uh, Pluteus cervinus, uh, very very common. This we call this the fawn mushroom. Um, I never see them in clusters but, like this, though. I usually yeah. I don't know. I have a problem with that ID because. First of all, I mean, it's not, you know, unless it's growing, unless it's on underground wood, they normally grow on. The note that was provided, yeah. it was grown on a ground out elm tree stump. Oh, well, okay. And it was all the wood chips were all thrown back into the, into the hole. Okay. 
Interesting. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah, Zerula. This has gone through so many name changes, and that's why uh, the person has actually shown Zerula, Odman, Ciela, Calibia used to be the rooting Calibia is actually the common name for it really frequently. And if you just cut it off at the stem or right at the ground, you never see this rooting structure. And the rooting part is uh, is important for the ID, shows a spore print, et cetera. Cerulus uh, luteus, um, um, the slippery jack. And yeah. again, an ID slip, scale, um, many, many features shown here. Including the, the kind of the slipperiness of it, it seems like they've captured. <laughs> Hard to not capture that with that particular mushroom. Antiloma abortivum, showing three different uh, things put together. Um, so hmm. it's got it all covered there. Fuligoseptica, uh, again, this is that dog vomit slime or whatever. So one of two, one of two and then, or scrambled egg slime, I guess, is another. A little less indelicate mm. name, but dog vomit. I like that one. I remember mm -hmm. that one better. Um, Jim, Gymnopolis luteus. This is our uh, laughing Jim. Yeah, laughing Jim. So, yep, quite striking. There's photo one, oh. and then there's more showing. Typically, you'll end up with somewhat of a rusty colored spore print for it yeah, brownish to rust and you can see some remnants of that on the vestigial ring that'll be on it it doesn't have much of a ring usually disappears so hygrophorus russella um, this one is a particular mushroom that kind of sort of fits two particular molds it's russella like but it's also kind of like a hygrosophy, but it's not. It's a hygrophorus. So, I mean, that's where they, that's how they play with names in the mm -hmm. science. And here's the white spore print of it. This is uh, an edible one, but every fifth one tastes like mud. So. Wow. Wow. This is like a, a slime mold. Yes. So um, in, in the scientific technical category, sometimes you got a lot of different terms and terminologies um, that are thrown out. And, and oftentimes in forays, I think people talk about slime molds. And this is an example of a, just a grouping of a bunch of the different slime molds you'll run into with uh, some ID thrown for them. Very nice. Um, also, uh, you know, the glossary of terms, sometimes the term guttation, um, which we we touched on briefly this is a slide that's showing various um examples of gutation where it can be quite prominent and it can be a little understated underneath it's the process of secretion or oozing of droplets of excess liquid from the pores of some fungi so quite common to see never seen one on a hypomyces one like we saw in one of the earlier ones so this is a picture just trying, we talk about reticulation sometimes in the field um, when we're talking about IDs and a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's showing the netting on a bolete. And cespitos is another one of those terms that gets thrown out there. It's a feature of some macrofungi that where they share a common attachment point. And here's several of them, uh, some honey fungus and some other kinds of jack-o'-lanterns. And I think these might be cystoderma or something else and, and another one that all show common attachment points. And this is a picture of one of the other common um, Slippery boletes that we find, uh, Suillus grevellii. Um, I think it's uh, sometimes called a larch bolete or something, but um, um, spore print 
provided the slippery nature, quite striking. And it does stain slightly brown um, on the undersurface of the, uh, of the pore surface. Let's see, Hygrosibi cassineas with an ID slip. Um, that would be extremely helpful. Um, Hygrosibis are kind of tough, especially these little red ones. So the additional features, hopefully, on the ID slip would help. Um, Amanita marabrubrescence, which is one I'm unfamiliar with, but this is quite striking, mm -hmm. showing the uh, the... Amer the rubrescence is that it marks it marks yellow. I mean, I'm reddish. It gets yeah. a reddish staining that occurs on it. So, um, and then cross section, etc. Um, Lexinum insignia. Uh, we we touched on this one briefly, and this has got the whole tamale showing spores sizes, um, the type of uh, this particular one showing the leaves here look like oak leaves. Oh. Looks like the staining when they've cut the stalk as well. Yep. Yeah. Otidia on Attica. Um, hair's here. Um, it's one of the it's one of the uh, kind Cups. of old quasi cup fungi. Mm, not that common. Not common, no, oh no. But it's sort of a. No. And this is a this is a unique one. This there's only one species of Paragyridon that I'm aware of. Sparrows, Sparrosporus. Um, this is all, also called the leather neck, and mm -hmm. it. When you cut it sideways, it does stain red, and it does show this leathery covering over the pore surface of it. It is a bolete, um, and pretty common, but uh, hard to, uh, um, I mean, you have to tear through this cover. That's why it's called a leather neck. Yeah. So that covering is pretty. This is a Leuc Leucopaxillus albicimus. Uh, with an ID slip, and again, it's got all the features here on one thing, um, including sure have a spore. That's what it looks like. Yes. So, photomicroph, uh, yeah, my, microscopic photograph yeah, photography. Um, this is the Lactarius pubescens. Uh, variation betula. That would suggest that it's around birch. Um, Betula is the birch. Uh, this is one of the fuzzy, fuzzy sided um, lactarius, and these were fairly common in Colorado. So, if, uh, if that that might be where this person person is at the Colorado Foray, we saw a number of these. Uh, we don't really usually see very many fuzzy, fuzzy sided lactarius, but it is yep, very striking. Lacrimaria echiniceps. Um, he's got spiny head. Uh, so formerly uh, Satharella. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. And this used to be in the Hygrosibes. Uh, so that's a Gliophorus cytosinus, which it's often called a parrot mushroom because green and yellow, you don't see that much except in the, in the birding world in parrots. Yeah, um, is it more so of a tropical species? Or? Uh, yep. And Dictophora duplicata, again, this is a, uh, this is one of the stink horns. Polyporus umbilatus. This is uh, one of the unique uh, large polypores that actually has individual umbrella shaped uh, stems and caps. And it grows in a large cluster. That's picture one of two, second one is right there. And it is a polypore. 
Um, oftentimes the pores will become rather shaggy looking as they age and go down the stem. So, Plicoteropsis crispa, very striking and a birch log. Yeah. Hmm. 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 <laughs> species. Um, boy, Ron. Um, uh, maybe you have some. More is a, this is striking. This is just. Yeah. It's, so that's a coprophilus mushroom, which means it's probably on a on a growing on a dung pellet. Right. Right. <laughs> but it's wow. Well, yeah, wow. Yep. Uh, Flammulated of the lutipes, yeah. uh, the velvet foot mushroom. And activity humor. Okay, we're Ooh. moving on. Hopefully, we'll get through this in about five, ten minutes, and then we'll be able to cover the important business of the, uh, of the annual report. Okay. Right. Hello. Hello. Okay, so oftentimes the... You know the decap uh, the the caption that's on these will actually, you know, add to the character of the photo. Um, getting ready for Halloween. Okay. Yellow slime attacks an innocent oh. fungi. As Ron mentioned. Mm -hmm. yep. Chicken in a basket. <laughs> Bountiful harvest. <laughs> oh, Philippe brings home the bee acorn, bacorn. Acorn. <laughs> yeah. Cute. That's cool. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Look at that. The rare duck <laughs> bill blew it. <laughs> whoa. Oh, man. Forestville foray. This would be more of an activity photo. And am I too early for Halloween? Sort of like a ghost, but I think it's a parasitized bolete. What's this? Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who came up with that, man? <laughs> <laughs> Baby's first amatox. That's crazy. Yeah, teeth them right. <laughs> oh, love at first smell, the netted stink horn. The flies are going crazy. <laughs> Mushroom social distancing. <laughs> All right. Perseverance. That was <laughs> they've got like three things all taped together to get that thing up there so that's pretty amazing ah looks like somebody's sculpture stairway to heaven there you go inspiring aspiration <laughs> ah Faithful furry foraging companion. <laughs> and plumber fun guy. <laughs> you know, we do seem to get our, our share of butt jokes. <laughs> there is a recurring yeah. theme in this one. You'll Thank see. You, yeah. Keep going. Yes. Earth star after the rain. Wow. So that actually the puffball part of that is gone, but you really see the beautiful star part <laughs> bacon of the woods <laughs> oh hubble captures didymus dimorphus eject a shroom <laughs> nice mm. tripping <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I'm gonna go back one. There we go. The duel. Girls. On the count of three, it's kind of a nice action shot of the photographer taking the photo. 
this is a <laughs> this is a spoof on the the David Aurora book. <laughs> Looks like him. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, another bad hair day. The Spinellus Fusinger bonnet mold. Nicely captured. And how many do you see? This is like some of the scientific ones where it's calling out some features of the of the cap. The umbinate. What is that mushroom though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could be a could be a uh, the hare's foot. Um, Coprinus, maybe? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not sure they're ever umbulate. Cold, cold smoked yeah. oysters. Horse poop medium. Wow. Some sort of Coprinellus or dung mushroom. Paniolus could be a. To be exact be blue blue meanies <laughs> hallucinogenic but mm -hmm. maybe not black oyster cultivation can't hear you i've got fungus in my ear all right this is a halloween picture hooray for halloween nice spider webs on that Nice color. <laughs> Another butt joke, butt crack bullied. <laughs> I like big shrooms, I cannot lie. Junior mushroom hunter. Yeah. Ah, adorable. What is this? Morel monster. Oh, wow. This is the big reveal. So this is cutting it to see if it stains. Uh, totally unexpected. Never trust an egg. Wow. Yeah. You can see that you might have thought those were puffballs, but then when you cut them in half, they're stinkhorn eggs. <laughs> Very young pheasant pack. Which way do I go? Chicken coop, a big flush of chicken of the woods. Sporadic. So this is all white spores. Oh, yeah, yeah. That released. Wow. And the gutation. Ufta. Yeah, what is that one? <laughs> Not where I wanted to find a mushroom. <laughs> a new meaning that to is wild. Wow. Species so. Campus Rumpus elevatus. <laughs> I think those are probably birch bow leaves, maybe, that they're standing on. There you go. And then that saying, some mushrooms are edible, some only once, or all mushrooms are edible, some only once. This is definitely an amanita that it's something, something took, took a bite. bite out of it. Here's some William yeah. O'Brien yeah. parade photo. VIP breakfast. The rare bagel mushroom. <laughs> Fung electrical storm. <laughs> nice. And thank you. Whew. All we right. Room. Thanks everyone for hanging in there. It's a lot of photos to look at. 
Um, I think we, um, if I can jump in, just make sure we thank Howard again for hours and hours and hours yes, that he put in, a lot of work, listed and organized, and everybody else who you know helped with the yeah. IDs. But Howard, um, I think we need a <laughs> round of applause. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. so yeah. much work compiling the photos, putting them in a PowerPoint. Yeah, and then the Amazing. judging the. Um, Awards will be announced at the luncheon, the banquet. And then um, the other thing that will be announced will be the Golden Chanterelle Award winner. And we're sort of listing some of the previous award winners. So it won't be one of these people because you can only win the award once. 